rap for the people in town. We're in Harlem now, so you got to get down. Well, I gotta do it in a way that's nice. I don't want to walk out of here with ice. I want to tell you, man, when I'm in town, you and me, Biz, gonna get it down. That's right, y'all. That's right. fathers came to this country to practice freedom of religion, all right? Remember that. But today, there's a fierce religious war being waged between godless anti-religionists and those of us who have faith and still believe in God. Tonight now, we join together against the atheists who are out to deny us the very freedoms that the Constitution is based upon. Plus, we'll debate the vile, blasphemous film, The Last Temptation of Christ. It's God versus atheism. And the people of Harlem and the Apollo Theater are going to be heard next. Come on. everybody. Good evening. Let me introduce, we have no one, no one at our loud mouths yet. Let me introduce the folks who we have at home base. First, let me introduce Rob Sherman, national spokesman for American Atheists. Rob, how are you tonight? I'm doing well. Robert Skalrud, is the executive director of the National Legal Foundation. Good guy. Let's not kid around too long, Rob, all right? Because I want your ass out of here, really. <laughs> you, you and your people, all right, draw a connection between my God Almighty and the Tooth Fairy. And you compare the wonders of the Bible and Jesus to Walt Disney and the Seven Dwarfs. Frankly, I think you're dopey here, all right? Oh, yeah. I'd laugh, pal, because God still loves you even though you're in... Tell me what the American, tell me, tell me and tell the audience what the American, zip it, what the American people and what the American atheists think. American atheists are the true patriots of this country. We're the ones that are saying, let's support our Constitution and abide by its provisions, not these Constitution-hating God-believers who are trying to use government to establish their brand of religion as the official religion in this country. Let me tell you something, pal. Let me just tell you something, all right? Well, we're going to talk about that, too, all right? We're going to talk God about is that. make-believe. God is not make-believe, pal. Cool it, all right? I want you, I want you to tell these people how you, what does that say? I'm proud to be an American atheist. See, that's the beauty of living in this country. Right. We're, we're grateful to have someone like you here because we realize you can still be trained, <laughs> all right? You can still be trained. Robert. Let me, let me go to Robert Scalrud, all right? Robert, is this guy a godless whisper in the wind, or is the atheist movement really a threat to the American way of life? Well, the, the atheists are a threat to the American way of life. Madeline Murray O'Hare and her son John and people like Rob Sherman and others are a threat. They're trying to drive... I had her son John on my yeah. show. Well, I... All right. I, John, I called him no good bastard, and he sued me for half a million bucks. Now, you got to defame someone because, uh, and calling him a bastard is not a defamatory thing. He is the son of a dog. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we're in the same suit. Madeline said she's going to sue me for a new Mercedes. Um, 
But the atheists are trying to drive out all godless, uh, make America godless. They're trying to drive out They've Christianity, done a good job of Judaism. They've gotten prayer out of the, gotten prayer out of the schools, all right? Well, we They've got forced prayer. Huh? Just forced prayer. There was prayer. no forced prayer, pal. I went to school when I was a kid, and no one stood there and said, you will say the right. Word. In many public schools, they force children to pray to that make-believe deity parent, Jesus. And we don't think that children should be forced to pray when they don't want to. Any child is free to pray at any time that he wants in the public schools today. We just and do they say, we're going to give you a minute to pray anytime you want? No, they, the government no, they doesn't don't. tell children when to pray, what to pray, how to pray, or even it if they should pray. It doesn't send breaths like you and Madeline Murray O'Hare got in there and made sure... We can't even say in the Pledge of Allegiance the word God anymore in a public school because of you guys. No, it's because in 1954, a bunch of fundamental uh, uh, radical uh, God believers changed our Pledge of Allegiance to a Prayer of Allegiance so that now when you say the Pledge of Allegiance, you're expected to profess a belief in some deity parent that doesn't exist. Robert, Robert, can you read None of that's forced on him. 96% of the people in America, according to the latest poll, believe in God. Who's latest and, poll? And Gallup poll and all the others. And, and what they want to do Gallup is they want to they want to take their point of view and cram it down our throats, the 96% of us. Their views aren't any more important than ours. And when 96% of the people... What they're doing, Robert, all right, he says, I'm an American atheist and we're the true patriots of this country. That is the same thing that Lenin said in, in uh, Russia, all right? He was a godless atheist, just like you, and a commie stink pot. Yeah. Yeah. If he wants to believe in Jesus Christ, that's fine. But this is not a Christian nation. This is a nation. This found... is a nation of freedom of religion. That's Are right. you a religion? I agree. Are you a religion? No. Atheist. Then you have no. That this is a nation, not a Christian Read nation. Read the Constitution, a Rob. Read the Constitution. This nation was formed for freedom of religion. I didn't see it say freedom of atheism. And you I can be an atheist all you want. Don't take away my religion. Don't take away my nativity scene. Don't take away my cross on top of a school. Don't do any of those things, pal. You want to They're all religious freedom. You want to put a cross on top of your church or on top of your church school? Go right ahead. It's a free country. But in this country, we don't allow the government to editorialize about religion. What further damage, Robert, do you think the atheists can do? They've done a lot of damage. I understand they're getting ready to take in God we trust off the dollar. And we will. We will. In 1953, when I was born, they didn't have that offensive sectarian religious graffiti on our money. And before I go to heaven, Mort, we're going to make sure that's off. You ain't awesome. going to heaven, bro. If sitting through one of your shows, any place I go is going to seem like heaven. Maybe he just professed his faith. They want to take in God we trust off our coins and off our currency. One of the letters that was written to me the other day, a man said, that he, uh, over in Italy, the man took out a crumpled dollar bill and he said, America must be a great country because they allow in God we trust on their currency and it's gotta be great. And he said, you people keep it on your currency. Other nations are looking to America as the great hope of the world. It's not on my money. Here's a $20 bill from 1950. There's no one God we trust on here. Only when the religious fanatics got a hold of our money if they put it on there. Here are a couple of two dollar bills. 1953. This one, this one, wait a second. This one. This one, this one doesn't have in God we trust on it, therefore it mustn't be real. We'll be back in just a second, and we'll see just how far religious persecution goes as we meet a pastor who had to go to court to have the right to pray. Stay with us.
Transportation for the Morton Downey Jr. Show, furnished by Quality Limousine Service. When in New Jersey, call 201-785-9071. joined in this segment by Mr. Stephen Thorne, who is the director of the San Diego chapter of American Atheists, and at Loudmouth number two, we are joined by Pastor William Parker of the Glory Tabernacle Church. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Stephen, you call yourself a born-again atheist. The hell is that? And, uh, you know, I mean, aren't you worried that the summer's heat is only a little sample of what you're going to end up with? I can't hear you. I said, you call yourself a born-again atheist. Right. Aren't you a little concerned that maybe this summer's heat is a sample for you of what you're going to end up with, huh? This time of day, there's no problem. What's great about this country is that we can get together and discuss these issues just like we're doing today. That's what's fantastic about this country. That's what I defended for nine years. Get your microphone. That's what I defended for nine years in the United States Army. Our right to meet as we are meeting today. All right. Not to yell like that, too. Do you also, do you also, gentlemen, do you also defend our right as a nation, if let's say a city like Zion, Ohio, which I'm Illinois. familiar with, Illinois, all right, like Zion decides they want to vote to have a cross in their city seal, and that's a majority of the people, would you defend those people to have that cross in their seal? Then their right to hold that opinion, but their right stops when it infringes upon the Constitution, which guarantees a separation of state and church. Ah, wait a second, wait a second. Let's learn what the Constitution really says. Robert, the Constitution doesn't say that at all. All it says is Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The and he's trying to prohibit the free exercise. The courts have interpreted that repeatedly to mean that what that requires is a separation me, of state and church. Let me introduce uh, Pastor Parker. You've noticed a conspiracy in this country against those who believe in God. Who's at the forefront of that anti-God movement? There's no question about it. There is a conspiracy in America right now against Christians and against God-fearing and God-believing people. I experienced myself personally. I went to the city of New York to the Parks Department and make a, made a simple request that a bunch of Christians could gather together in Central Park and pray for our city, and I was denied because we were a religious group. You weren't denied. You were denied because you got an idiot. I caught you, the man. Yeah. that they said was that they denied us our permit to, to go into Central Park and pray because we were, that we did not divulge what is the specifics of our prayer. They said because we we're going to have prayers of an unspecified nature. Now when we reach a point in America where we have to tell them what it is that we're going to pray, I want you to know that we're, we're not the United States of America anymore, not according to the Constitution. Well, let me, let me ask these gentlemen. We might... You know, like Mr. Thorne and Mr. Sherman said, it's America, we can speak out. Maybe we can find a common ground here. Or, Would you agree that he, his rights were impinged upon I by not allowing I think it's inexcusable him? that he was not allowed to gather with uh, some of his people to say whatever he wants to say in Central Park. But you say that there's a conspiracy against God believers. When was the last time the Vice President of the United States told you that you're not a citizen because of your beliefs. He's told me that atheists aren't citizens because this is supposedly one nation under a God. We say this is one nation under a constitution. Iran is one nation under a God. Well, you know, a reporter, a reporter, a reporter asked a pedestrian the other day, does he know what the two main problems in America are? And he said, I don't know and I don't care. And the reporter said, you're right. You don't know and you don't care. What's happening in America today, right now, as we stand here, is an insidious working of uh, many people, part, partly uh, atheists such as you, 
we've got the television media, we've got the movies, and they're all making Christians out to be fools, to be idiots, to not know what they're talking about, to not be honest, God-fearing, loving, concerned citizens of the United States. You have the right to be a fool. That we aren't loving of our families and our children and of our country. I am tired of this nonsense, this arrogance. Of course, exactly what you're saying. This is an arrogant position that when you say those kinds of remarks, what you are implying is that we also don't love our own families and our own country. If you want to be foolish enough to think that there's some make-believe deity parent floating around the sky, that's your right. It's a free country. But we know better. We know that God is make-believe. You know, it says on our coins, liberty in God we trust. Our liberty is based on the God that we trust in. Without the providence and divine power and strength of God to make this country great, it wouldn't be as great as it is today. The only reason that God trust on them is because some fundamentalist born-again types back in the 1860s tried to get our Constitution amended to profess that this country and the Constitution said something about Jesus Christ. And we, did, the, con the Congress did not allow our Constitution to be amended to say Jesus Christ. So the guy that wanted to put Jesus Christ in our Constitution got appointed to be the director of the men, and he put in God and trust our money instead. creatures, man, whether they're white, black, brown, yellow, isn't us who created the problem, not God. This man in his presumptuousness and his lying and the deviousness and the darkness of his own mind that has led us to this perdition. Truly. I gotta tell you, stay here with me a second, all right? Stay here with me, because I gotta tell you, when we blame God, all right, we're blaming the wrong person, pal. Right, right. You might, you might talk about the lion, but the lion goes on on both sides. True. And until both sides can True. come together, True. then the lies are gonna continue. You're enslaved, I'm enslaved, this entire town is enslaved. That's when we get out of it, when you speak up like this. Keep Amen. speaking. Amen. Speak. Amen. And I say, and I tell everyone that we better get on our knees and teach our children how to spend, when we say God bless America, we better understand what the blessing is all about. Let's go back to teaching our children how to pray and how to understand what faith is really all, all about. All right. Damn right. Next, the film that hurt more Christians in one day than the lions ever did. Stay with us. Let me welcome a new guest to our home base area and remind you that we're coming from the beautiful Apollo Theater in the heart of America, baby, Harlem, USA. I'm going to introduce you to Skip Porteous, who is a freedom writer. There is a new motion picture out that some of you may or may not have seen called The Last Temptation of Christ. Skip, you say that, and we'll tell you what some of the quotes are from that motion picture in just a minute. Skip. You say that Jesus in this movie 
is one that we can all relate to. Don't you think most people do just fine relating to Jesus as we already know him, as opposed to a lust-filled, crazed man as depicted in this film? I mean, this guy's more like Jimmy Carter than he is Jesus. Or Jimmy Swagger, huh? No, or I don't... Jimmy Swagger, or right? Or Jimmy Swagger. That's right. I think that folks in this audience have read the Bible a little bit, and the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every manner as we are, yet without sin. So don't tell me he didn't have lust in his heart like Jimmy Carter no, did. No, because lust can be a sin itself. Okay. All lust. right? Lust can be a sin. You who are apparently so religious ought to know that. Lust can be a sin if it's fulfilled, but... Lust if does Jesus, not have to be fulfilled to be a sin. If Jesus right? wasn't tempted in every manner as we are, if you're a Christian and believe in him, then what good is it that he died for your sins? But see, the movie depicts Jesus as a man who died. But the point is about this movie, and Americans need to know this, that the opposition to this film is because the, the TV evangelists have suffered from two years of scandals, and they found a great way to raise a lot of money from this movie. And that's the reason that the opposition... I have right You're here... You're saying that the reason for the opposition of this film is because the TV evangelists are going to raise money by getting people to go against the film? Exactly. It's right a lot here. of horse crap. No, no. Did they play the money for the film? More. Did the TV evangelists make the film? Did they produce it? They're, they're did they have anything to do with producing it? They're living off did it. Did they have anything to produce it? They did not it? produce it. They produced you're right. They so you're a liar. Their own film. You're a liar. It never even went over. Let me, let, me introduce, let me introduce you to Dr. Richard Lee of the Rehoboth Baptist Church. More. Dr. Lee, question. You agree with our great religious scholar here, Skip? name of one of the disciples undoubtedly <laughs> all right not only isn't the movie blasphemous it may be historically accurate well let me say something he quoted a scripture hebrews 4 15 i don't know if he knew that but it said that jesus was tempted at all points as we yet he sinned not but what he doesn't realize is in matthew chapter 5 verse 28 it says that jesus said if you look at a woman to lust after her you've already committed adultery and sin in your heart See, let's not quote just part of the Bible. Let's well, do it all. That's just, that's just Skip. That's just Skip looking away out of those sins, all right? Yeah, let's skip. just quote it all. Okay. Let, 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 me, let me quote some of it. Let me, let me, let let me, me quote some of it. Doctor, let me quote some of this to you. In the movie, folks, Jesus declares to Mary Magdalene, woman is God's greatest work, and I worship you. God sleeps between your legs. Let me say this, Mort. Mort. That makes me sick to my stomach. That was I'll in tell the you movie, why. Mort. Listen to it was me. It's not in there. The reason it, it makes me the sick movie. to my Bumble stomach. Movie. The reason it makes me sick to my stomach is because that defames Jesus Christ. That degrades Jesus Christ. And Jesus, in no wise, anywhere in the scriptures, even in tone or thought, or in any way, would have even thought that, said that, or imagined that. So what we've got here is not a matter of censorship, it's defamation of character. All right. Not character right. of Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you something. Jesus can always sue. He's the final arbiter yes, of your yes. soul. Yes. Another quote. Another quote. In a dream sequence in this movie, Jesus marries Mary Magdalene, nothing wrong with that, and has sex with her kissing on or near her breasts as he invites an angel in to watch. No, what's he, a voyeur now? That's blasphemy. Huh? Nothing less than blasphemy. Again? No, no. Again? What's that? That's okay to have in the movie? Some of those quotes you have are not in the movie. These are all in the movie. No, they're not. These are all in the movie. No. I, I viewed the movie. The one These are all God, in the movie. The one that God sleeps between your legs is not in the movie. No, one Mark, scene shows... I, I want to say something right, to One Dick scene here. shows copulating snakes, all right? One of which speaks to Jesus and Mary hey, Magdalene's voice. Snakes do it voice. too, you know. Snakes that's to a right. yes, that's right. the result of a perverted mind. Yeah. That's but a sick mind. In this movie, to show you how historically accurate it is, Jesus convinces Judas to betray him. But, Mort, one thing that really bothers me about this film, here we have a pastor from Atlanta, Georgia. I've been reading up on Atlanta, Georgia. They have lots of problems of racism down there in the police department. What Ku problem Ku does that have to do with what Ku we're talking about? Ku 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 Klux Klan. No, don't try to get off the subject. Ku Klux Klan. He wants, to get, he wants to get off it. He wants no, no. to get off of it. He is wants part to get of off problem. Atlanta, which yeah. has had two black mayors, and this city, which hasn't elected one. Yeah, right. right. 
Why don't we talk Bible? You no, want to talk Bible? The, the, the issue is, you are going out around the land of, with a petition getting people to not to see this film, the boycott well, listen, theaters, let me tell you and you've got petition. some real problems in your city, and I, I called your church the other day to see how many people you had, 7,100 people in your church in Atlanta. I said, how many black people do you have in the church? And the lady couldn't think of any. And then you're up here in Harlem why don't, why don't, protesting why don't you have this movie. Listen, listen to me. Our so church what? is an open church. I'll tell you, can I be frank with you? The black people probably wouldn't want to come to our church if they was dead. I, uh, they want to go someplace alive. But they're welcome in our church. But let me say something about that petition. Let me tell you what I did. Three weeks ago, Mort, I read this and it made my stomach sick. So I said, why don't we find out how many people in Atlanta, Georgia, really, this makes sick. They would sign a petition. Here's what we did. We took two full pages in the Atlanta Journal saying, here's what the movie says. Here's what you can do about it. Sign this petition. And tonight, I'm on my way tomorrow to Universal Studios in Hollywood with 120,000 signatures. But well, you know what you did. 120,000. But you know what you did. Let me tell you something. I would never, I would never deny anyone their right to see the film That's right. if they want to see the film. Right. Come down, pal. I can't hear your big mouth up there. Come down here. Come down here. Come down. Come down. Come on. Come on. Come on down. Get them down. I want a lot of time. I want a lot of time to talk to the people in the audience. So we're going to take a break, all right? We'll meet the angriest protester of all. She says she'll stop at nothing to clear God's name, and we'll speak to the people of America next. Stay with us. I don't always have the last word. There's plenty to say tonight, plenty left to say. So you stick around because the news at 10 is dead ahead. here at the Apollo in Harlem then, the Flaming Caucasians, huh? <laughs> Let me, this gentleman, this gentleman was calling from the balcony. He is down on the loudmouth. Go ahead, sir. From the time this show has started, it's been going from one subject to another. All I want to say is this. There's only one God, and that's that man up there. One God. And he's the only one that we have to answer to is him up there. That is the God up there. There's no other God. I don't care about what he says, he says, and he says. There's only one God. That's him up there. We all, we all have two eyes. We breathe the same breath. We talk the same language. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Is your God big enough, like my God is, to defend himself against a movie that Hollywood makes? Excuse me? Excuse me? My God, my God is big enough to defend himself against any movie Hollywood makes. Is yours big enough to defend himself? Mine is greater. He's greater. There's one. He's greater. One, right? He's only one. There's only one. I keep telling you. You're not listening to me. There's one up there. Up there, only one. All these things together. All of a sudden, hi, no, no. We're talking. We're talking tonight. We're talking tonight about atheism, the planned 
destruction of man's belief in God. Let me introduce our youngest guest. She's 15 years old. Her name is Mary Donovan, and she's a damn good activist. Hi, Mary. All right, pal. Mary, like Dr. Lee, like Dr. Lee, you have begun a petition drive against this filth that he likes, all right? When you heard about the content of this film, how'd you feel? I was mad as hell, Mort. We're not taking this. I mean, the first, the first thing I thought to do was get a petition together, and now me, my family, my friends, we're all petitioning. And we'll all do right. whatever it's we take to defend our Lord's name. What, what, what do you plan to do to defend and show your love for God? Show my love for God? Yeah. I will defend his Don't name. Don't read it, Mary. Tell me from your heart. I don't want to know what's on a piece of paper. I want to know what comes from here. I love Jesus. That's my God. I don't want you dragging his name through the mud. You have no right to do that. I at can all. make the movie, you know. Hey, you know, I think you going out and picking the movie theaters I makes as much it. sense. You going out and picking the movie theaters makes as much sense as these guys going out and trying to drive a Christian bookstore out of town. I defend your right to do it, but it doesn't make any sense. Let me ask Stephen. Let me ask Stephen Cohen. Stephen, you stated that Christianity is a crazy idea. Do you think these people are crazy for trying to keep the last temptation of Christ out of their local theaters? No, I think it's their right to do so, but it's a free enterprise system. Hey, I'll yell if I have to. I guess I'm going to have to yell like this. Can you hear me? Okay. It hurt your ears, but... Okay. This is a free country. You have the right not to watch this or any other program. You have the right to watch or not watch any particular motion picture that you like. A God-given right. A God-given right. Let me say this. Right. It is a free country. And you have... You do have a right. You do have a right to watch things, but you do not have the right to defame another's character or attack another's character. And this is defamation of the character of Jesus Christ. They can take you to court for that. Son, and the nail is on the other foot. It's okay for the federal government to defame our opinion about religion by saying American values and God we trust. That's okay for the federal government to defame our values. Would you like but all become a Christian? Some of the guests of the Morton Downey Jr. Show stay at the Meadowlands Hilton Hotel. Let's go back to the people in the audience. Let's start with another Donovan. Go ahead, Blondie. Your problem is you're a kook, and you only believe in the almighty buck. That's what you believe in. You're going to make a movie off of something that is very sacred to millions of people, and you'll make money off it. I have not. I didn't That's make your that God. movie. I didn't make That's that your movie. God. I didn't no, make I that movie. I agree with you. You'll support it. You'll I, support it. I, I no, it's just the opposite. Here. I'm but, saying people shouldn't go and waste their money on that movie. But all of a sudden, the nail is on the other foot. It's okay for the government to ridicule our opinion about religion, but as soon as somebody in private industry ridicules your opinion, oh, that we got to stop. You Where don't believe are you? in anything. Where Even a dog you? has faith in his master. Where a kid has faith in his parents. You don't believe in nothing. Where you don't you believe in the 
defend my dignity when it comes to taking in God we trust off of our money. Let me hear from this lady. We believe in science. We believe in reason and reality. God had you in mind when he wrote this scripture. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. And when we wrote you the also book, say, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we wrote a book that said people who believe in God are fools, that God is make-believe. There is no such thing as a God. Man created God in his own image and likeness. You people in pornography have been making a lot of money off of kids, or for women. Now you're trying to make porno movies out of Jesus Christ. What the hell is wrong with you? How did huh? Are you people, you people smoking crack or what? No, I'm saying. You're going to make Jesus Christ into a porno movie? No, just We're the opposite. We're not going to have it in Brooklyn. We're not going to have it in Manhattan. And we damn sure not going to have it in New York. Take it back to LA. Now, I'm the guy saying, don't go and see that movie. But what are you doing? praying to the white man's God. In every society, in every culture, man has created a God that looks like the people in that society, acts like the people in that society. Why are you praying to the white man's God? More. And more a couple of months back, you had a person out here that called you a communist for not having a flag, of the American flag on stage. And on behalf of the United States Air Force, we'd like to present you with the ceremonial flag. Air Force hat and Air Force t-shirt. And at the beginning of the show, you Here's said you were a true patriot. That's right. If Here's you took flag. the oath of allegiance, right you said so. Help me, God. No, I don't say yes, that. You did. No, You're a were you in the service? Were you in the service? No, then I you don't. said so. All right, then. All right, then. Were you in the service? No, I had a high lottery number. You had a what? High lottery number in 1972 when I was 19. Conveniently held. Conveniently had a high lottery number in 72. Mark. Once again, Skippy has proved that he's a loser by trying to make a racial issue out of a religious one. This is about Jesus Christ, somebody many of us hold sacred, and you're trying to make it a black and white issue. It's I not a black and white say, issue. I neglected to say he is a writer. He is with the press. What the hell do you think the press does? They try to make every issue into a racial issue. We're all brothers under one God. Thank you, Mort. Go ahead, pal. Hi, Mort. How you doing? I'd just like to say that as a person and as an American citizen, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, I love God, and I'm pretty sure that God loves everybody. And uh, as far as you being an atheist, that's your business. But if you try and uh, push that to other people, you got a sick problem. And you should get out of this country and go live in uh, Russia. If you're you not look like smart a damn enough. communist to me. Get the hell out of the country. If you're not smart enough to realize that God is make-believe, we're not going to try and convince you of that. But we don't want the government denying our right to be atheists. He doesn't even realize. He doesn't even realize. He's a Christian now. I baptized this silly son of a bitch. He did, man. That's the best baptizing he's ever going to get. Mark, Mark, what I like to say is that as they come here sporting atheism, the only example they have of atheism is a socialistic country like Russia. The only reason why there is in America is because of Christianity. Now, no way. Jesus said, "He who sets the sun, the, he who the sun sets free is free indeed." Now, there was no freedom until Jesus Christ came. All right, it was the Christians that helped slavery during the time of the Civil War. It wasn't atheists that helped the slaves. And there is no freedom outside of let's, Jesus Christ. Let's today. admit. Let's also admit. Let's also admit. Let's not hold ourselves up as mightier than thou, all right? Let's also admit Christians have committed some pretty heinous crimes. Christians, Christians own slaves like everyone else did, all right? Okay, everyone that's true. Else. In the communist countries, they say, say no to drugs, especially the worst drug of them all, religion. In this country, we say say no to drugs. Also. Which is atheism. The worst drug in the world is the drug of religion. Let me, let me ask one question. I hear of the Christian Foundation to help children, to raise money, to feed people, to do all of these things, to help the starving, to help the homeless. What atheist group helps everyone? What charity do you have? America. What charity? It's called the Save Our Constitution. That's the charity. Do you help people? 
Every you help the homeless. We should. Do. You help. You give them money. Yeah, fully. All right. In the beginning of the show, I heard him say, "When he dies and goes to heaven, he'll be happy." How the hell are you gonna go to heaven if there's no God? God created heaven and earth. Okay. Furthermore, we have starvation all on the earth, all over the world. Okay. How many atheists? How many? How many? How many donations do atheists have? How many? How many places do you support? We Christian society for children. Support children. They help hunger. Christian society for starving, for the homeless. They support that. All oh, that's Christian. All oh, that's God. What do you support? I'll tell you exactly what, what support? I support. For ten years, I've been a volunteer with the American Red Cross, going out at three in the morning. America is God. America to help the homeless, to fight, get a roof over God. their head, to get. This is my God. This is my God. American this atheists is my throughout God. this country have been working this with non sectarian organizations to help people who are homeless, to help people who are poor, who help people who are hungry. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hurry up. Hurry up. go back to Stephen for just a minute, but I want our audience to talk. I want you in the audience to see this. I don't imagine you can see it at home. This is the American Atheist, a journal of atheistic news and thought. It shows Santa Claus on the cross, along with two dwarfs on the cross, and the package is being given back to the kids. Boy, anybody who wants a free copy of the American Atheist magazine, and anybody who wants to know the true history of religious mottos on United States currencies and coins, I'll send it to them free. If they'll write to me, Rob Sherman, true one. and I've American read it. Atheist, not true. post office box 140195, Austin, Texas, 78712. Let me go to Shelvin here. Thank you. Let me go to Shelvin. Thank Let's you. Let's cool it. Let's cool it. Let's cool it over there. Come on. Thank you, Morton. Zip I appreciate the opportunity. Cool it. Appreciate the opportunity, Morton. Hey. I'd just like to take this time out to say that, that the, the blacks and the Jews, just to name a few, have been oppressed for some time now amongst a few groups. Now, now, they, they have taken a hold of something they feel is tangible, something that they can believe in. What and is it? I, it is the God Almighty. It is the Lord. And I will be damned if I let you take that away from me I don't want and to the take others it away from you. that believe in it.